my people what is up welcome back to my channel join me here on my floor so we can discuss thigh text. no but really this video is going to be a video about my experience with taking the supplement Vitex and how it helped me try to conceive. So for those of you that don't know, Vitex actually comes from a fruit. So it actually comes from something called a chast fairy tree or a chast tree. It's a tree that flowers and its fruit has been used to traditionally treat women trying to conceive or women's uh, reproductive health for centuries. It's all natural, it's not addictive, and you don't need a prescription to take it. So that's why I started taking this supplement to try and see if I can see some improvements in my hormones or in my cycle itself. So something to keep in mind when I was doing research for Vitex, um, they say not to take it longer than three months to kind of give your body a break and then if you need to, to try it again. The Vitex that I got actually comes with a 100 capsules and I take two capsules a day. The instructions on this say to take one capsule two or three times daily for 8 to 12 weeks. Thereafter, take one capsule daily. The best results obtained with continuous use. And then of course, if pregnant or nursing, please consult with a physician before taking this. So if you've been following my channel, you know the reason I started taking this is because I thought my luteal phase was short. And so the main objective when I started this was to get my luteal phase to stretch out so that I would allow myself a longer time to implant. Now knowing what I know, that might not be my issue, my luteal phase. It may have something to do with my tubes itself and me going through my whole journey with endometriosis. But I don't want to say this stuff didn't work because this did make my cycle more consistent and I'm excited to show you guys. Before I show you guys my charts, I want to let you guys know that a lot of women take three of these a day. I only chose to take two just because the first two weeks I did take three a day and wow, after five days of taking them, I noticed my mood swings got crazy after five days. Um, I started getting really anxious and really depressed and so that's when I decided to kind of back off a little bit and go down to two pills a day, which I did perfectly fine with. Um, my crazy mood swings went away. Um, I still noticed a little bit of, you know, hormonal mood swings, but they weren't as severe as when I was taking three pills a day. So I think a lot of it is taking your own body weight into consideration. I am naturally a tiny girl. Um, and so two pills a day was probably just fine for me. And then the last week and a half before I ran out of these pills, I went down to one pill a day just to slowly wean yourself off of this. This is affecting your hormones. So you don't ever just want to stop something immediately um, because that can do more damage than before. Like you might be worse off than you were before even taking this. So wean yourself off of this stuff um, and then give yourself the break. Don't take this for months and months at a time. If you already suffer from mental health conditions such as depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, and Parkinson's disease, please, please, please consult a doctor before taking this supplement. The supplement affects your brain and your hormones and it can make these conditions worsen and can be very dangerous for your health. So please consult a physician before taking Vitex if you have any of those issues. So let me talk about one of the, I guess, con symptoms that I had. Uh, there are a few side effects that can happen to you when taking Vitex. Simple things like dizziness, nausea, blurred vision, um, definitely do your research because each person it's gonna affect them differently the only negative symptom that I had was bleeding in between my cycles uh, in the month of February when I started Vitex I did get a bleed mid-month I guess um, I don't know if this was a true period it kind of messed up my whole charting thing um, so that's one of the cons that I did face with Vitex, it did give me a period 10 days after a previous period. Um, now, some of the pros that I saw. Vitex actually stopped acne that I would get um, before or right after my period. Uh, PMS acne, I guess you'd call it. 
I used to get it all around my t-zone especially around my nose and my chin and then sometimes up here a little bit I didn't get anything with the last two periods I had I didn't get one breakout at all so I'd like to contribute that to Vitex thank you very much uh, the next thing that it helped with was body inflammation and by this I mean cramps for the past two periods that I've been on Vitex for, my cramps were very dull, um, not painful. I didn't have to take any Aleve or any Midol or anything like that for my cramps. It definitely took away the cramps and the bloating. It, on a side note, I haven't done enough research about this. It has been known to help things like endometriosis, which are inflammatory diseases. However, there's not enough research done on it and there's a lot of contradicting articles that say if you have endometriosis, do not take Vitex. So again, if that's something you're suffering with, like myself, consult a physician before taking this supplement. Going back to the bloating, I don't know if other women get this, but I'm just going to be upfront with y'all. When I stop ovulating, after I've ovulated and I'm waiting to get my period, I get really constipated. And that has to do with the hormones that your body are re is releasing, the progesterone levels. It constipates you. It happens. This helped it. And again, I, ha I think this has to do with the um, anti-inflammatory aspect of it. Uh, the same way, and it helped my bloating, it also helped bathroom breaks. And then the obvious symptoms, I do like to say that it did kind of get my cycle to a healthy length. You'll see in my charts here in a second. Um, they're still a little bit all over the place. I think I'm gonna have to wait out a couple more months to truly see what it did to me and Given that my doctor says it's okay with now being diagnosed with endometriosis um, I would like to take another round of Vitex because I saw it working. I felt it working But do I know if I give myself enough time to see true results? I'm not sure so it is something that I am considering taking again in the future, but again, I am going to consult my doctor. So my plan here is I want to show you guys my charts. I have the months December and January to show you guys. These are the months that I did not take Vitex at all. And then I started taking Vitex in February. So I'm going to show you that chart as well. And then I'll show you so far what my chart looks like for April since I've stopped taking Vitex. So starting off with December of 2019, uh, this is when I started charting, and I was not on Vitex for this month. So, as per usual, I have about a five-day period. My uh, period length has never been the issue. It's been what actually happens in my cycle. So, here you can see um, I started tracking my ovulation. I glued these in backwards, so if I were to get a positive LH surge, this first line would have to be darker than the second line. Keep that in mind, please. I fix them as the months go on. So as you can see, all the way down to 22, I was not ovulating. 23, 24, this is generally the time I ovulated. And finally on 26 and 27, I got positive LH surges. All right, here is my January chart. This month, I was not on Vitex at all. Um, I was only taking a prenatal back in January. And as you can tell, uh, my cycle went to 35 days. That's when I started my period. I wasn't as good as charting back in there, so, you know, don't mind that. And this month, I actually don't think I ovulated at all. Um, I got a couple days where I got some pretty dark results, like around here, day 24 of my cycle. That was pretty dark, but I don't think that's a positive. This is generally the time that I do ovulate on day 24 of my cycle, but as you can see, it was pretty dark, but I don't think that's a positive. It's not, that first line isn't darker than the second line. And then later on in the month, again, I put a question mark here because on day 31, I got pretty dark lines as well. But I never got a positive LH surge this month. All right, and here is last month's chart, the months of February and March. Up here on February 10th, this was actually the dates that I was in the hospital for my miscarriage. I had a six day period or what I assumed to be my period. However, 10 days after this, I did start bleeding. Got my period, finished my period. 10 days after I finished, I started bleeding again with, I don't know if this was a true period or not. I asked my doctor and they did not know either. Oh, these tests are all messy. I'm sorry, guys. So I started recounting my cycle days. Um, I did ovulate this month. However, it was up here, 
and I either ovulated on day 25 or 26, which would be usual checking back at my other charts, or I ovulated on day 10 or 11, which would be much better if Vitex actually started working. So if Vitex did its job and this was a true period, then I then it got me to ovulate when I was supposed to. So after I ovulated, um, again, I went all the way to day 13 DPO before starting my period. So this cycle, it really stretched out my cycle instead of it being so short. I had a 40 day cycle this month. However, again, I don't know if it was truly a 40 day cycle. If this was a true period, then it was actually only a 25 day cycle, which if I texted its job, that's actually what I'm supposed to be having. So here's an overview for all of my charts for the year of 2020 so far. December, I was not on Vitex. However, I did ovulate day 26 and 27 of my cycle, and my cycle lasted 30 days this month. January 2020, I did not catch an ovulation this month. Uh, I did not catch an LH surge, and I'm pretty sure this might have been an inovulatory month. My cycle only lasted 34 days this month. February, I started taking Vitex. And as you can see, this month was a little bit chaotic. I did ovulate this month, but I also bled twice this month. Um, I either ovulated on day 25 or 26 of my cycle, or I ovulated on day 10 or 11 of my cycle. And this cycle was 40 days long. This is our current month, guys. We are in April and I am on day 13 of my cycle. I have not taken Vitex at all for this month. So yeah, those are my charts. As you can see, uh, this isn't gonna be the most definite information video for you guys. There's still a lot of unknown with the Vitex for me. Like I just said, I do feel more comfortable kind of doing another round of it again and then bringing my conclusions to you guys once more. Um, I don't feel like this was enough of a scientific study. It just wasn't long enough and I don't have enough cycles to really compare. But yeah, this is the video of my current Vitex experience, I guess. Uh, I'd say for me personally, it was worth a try. I'm excited to see what this first period off of it is gonna be like. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks again for watching another video. I can't wait to post more videos for you guys about the information that I've gathered on my TTC journey. I'm excited for you guys. I'm watching all your guys' videos. You guys are really keeping me motivated and really getting me inspired. So I appreciate all your guys' hard work. I appreciate all the support. And as always, I'm blowing you all the baby dust. I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Bye guys, thanks for watching.